Hello again, today is quarantine with Craig day 11 and if you're wondering why I'm wearing the exact same t-shirt as I was wearing in the last video, it's because I've just recorded this one straight after the last one because I missed a day. Today is topic I kind of discussed a little bit with Andrea on the Visualize Value uh, Slack group and it's a topic that I think some people find useful. It's Notion for productivity. So I use Notion. I used to use Evernote. And by the way, I am a complete productivity freak in terms of apps. So I've tried pretty much every single app that you can think of. I've tried Simple Note. I've tried Notion. I've tried Rome Research, which is more recent, which I kind of got on with a little bit, but I didn't like some bits of how it worked. I use Notion for everything now. That is my one tool. I've tried running uh, task warrior in my terminal to organize all my tasks. I've tried just using text files that are on my desktop. I've tr um, I'm trying to think of what else I've used. I've used Wonderlist and now it's not called Wonderlist anymore. It's called Microsoft Tasks or something like that. I've tried Basecamp for personal organization. I've tried Trello for personal organization and work organization. We use Basecamp at Genius Division. I've used Active Collab for project management. I yeah, I have used pretty much any any kind of productivity to-do list slash note-taking app that you can probably think of, I've tried it. So it, it's, it takes me a while to find a new one, and previous before I used Notion, I was using an app for Mac and iOS called Bear, and then I moved from Bear, you can see a pattern here, then I moved from Bear to something called Ulysses for Mac, which I really liked, I liked the structure of it, but I didn't like that I was paying a monthly fee for it, for something that didn't really seem to have much functionality. Notion is free, at, at the point of using it, it's free, but there, you usually find out that when you start to really get into it, you'll start paying a monthly fee for it, but it's pretty low, and the features that you get in Notion for it are kind of amazing. It's it's the Notion is the perfect in fact I'm just gonna jump into Notion now while I'm talking so you can see something visually. Notion is kind of the bastard child of Evernote of some kind of database app. And there's one that's kind of at the front of my mind, a, a kind of a database a productivity app where you can make your own databases, but I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, it's like an amalgamation of so many different kind of productivity apps. And when you first open Notion, it is incredibly overwhelming, especially if you are not kind of in the kind of uh, development kind of world. It asks you to use a lot of concepts and a lot of things that you've probably never seen before that you don't really understand. But because I'm kind of a developer, or at least I used to be, and because I run a digital agency, I kind of get all the terminology that it's using. So I got it pretty quickly, but it even overwhelmed me a little bit when I first set up Notion. So Notion is kind of an amalgamation of lots of different ideas, but at its core, it's really a note-taking app. That's the point of it, but that is massively underselling what Notion can really do. And in this video, I wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak peek into my Notion, and by the way, my Notion is not very clean, it's it's not pristine, but it works. And also show you some of the things that I've set up with it that you kind of things that, that are usually the first things that you set up when you use a, a productivity app. The biggest thing that appealed to me, Notion-wise, and why I switched to it from everything else, is because I've never found a tool where I can store everything, where I can have a system that works for both my work responsibilities, which is the day-to-day -day agency stuff at Genius Division, and also have inside it, but completely separate, all my personal projects, all the other stuff I want to do, and also have as many to-do lists as I wanted, but separated out into other stuff, and also maybe to have some kind of uh, dashboard in there, and also be able to use it as a, a place to store all my writing and my blogging, and also a place to store podcasting and YouTube videos. So that's a big ask for any kind of organization or slash productivity app. But Notion does let you do it, and it's really powerful. So this first example I've got on the screen here is my Quarantine with Craig kind of list of videos that I'm producing at the minute. You'll see right down at the bottom there, a walk through my Notion layout is the video that I am recording right now. And this layout I've got here is a table layout in Notion. So this, this the thing with Notion is 
the thing that makes it most powerful is the idea of databases. So if I make a new database, a new page in Notion, when it stops doing that, oh my god, let me pull that out so it stays there. Yeah, so if I make a new page like this, I can make a new page, like an empty page, like this. And then I can choose to just make it empty and put kind of nothing in it. Just It's just a bit like a text thing if I wanted, you know, like a note-taking app, and I can choose to do that. But the power of Notion comes from pressing forward slash and seeing all the different kind of things that you can do with a document. So as soon as I press forward slash, I can immediately make uh, to-do lists in here like this. I can immediately make um, a page, a sub-page of this page, which is basically, yeah, a sub-page of the previous page I've just made. So this is a sub-page. And then when I go back to the other page, it's linked that sub-page up in there. So when you're first setting something up, it can be kind of really freeform and, and really flexible, but you can do all sorts with it. So you can pretty much dump any kind of content into it and create some kind of organization system into it that will work for you. But the power of Notion really is the idea of databases. So if I do the forward slash again and I'm going to make a database, I am going to make, for example, with this one, I'm just going to make a list. So this could be a list of blog post ideas like this. And then in here, I've got a blog post idea, which could be, I don't know, uh, about lettuce. I don't know why I said lettuce, but there you go. So we've got lettuce, and then we write our blog post about lettuce inside there. And this list here is a database inside this page. And because it's a database, I can add extra views. So one of my favorite views, particularly when I'm doing content stuff, so when I'm trying to plan out when I'm going to record it or make it or what stage the idea is at, I usually make a board like this, and I might call it progress. So I've got a progress uh, board here now, and I can add a new group. So it might be ideas stage here, and then I might make another group for writing or recording or wh whatever you call it. And then the final one, I usually end up making something like, um, like a, a published one or something like that. So a bit like Trello, and another tip with Notion as well, which is really useful, is these bars up here, the top three dots. If you click it and click full width, it makes the page much wider and much easier to work with. So I've got this lettuce blog post here that I've been writing, which sits, sits all by itself in here, and I can dump anything in there I want to, and then I can drag it over to ideas, if it was an idea that I was working on, and then when I've finished up the idea, I can drag it to writing and recording, and then published, and then this little thing here lets me switch back through between list views and table views and any other kind of view. Well, these these five different version views that Notion has got, there, there's, there isn't any other ones. But they give you such power to do all sorts of stuff. So that's kind of a whistle stop tour of how you set up a page in Notion. But the reason I did that is so you can better understand the layout I've got for Quarantine with Craig. So I chose initially just a table layout for this so I can kind of bang all the information in that I really wanted to because another power of Notion is the ability to kind of make as many fields as you want on these and these are all custom so these people on this one that I've made because with Quarantine with Craig quite often I call out on here and um, for people to give me ideas and stuff like that when people give me an idea I record it in here so I remember who it is and then when I make the video, I can call them out, and it's just kind of a nice touch. And if it's on Twitter, I can put the Twitter handle in there, etc., etc. And I also like to have a status in here too. So I've at the minute I've only got a published status because this is kind of an early stage, uh, an early stage system for recording quarantine videos because I didn't think that my YouTube videos for quarantine was going to last quite a long time. So the advantage of Notion is you can set up a really loose system that's not that complicated and you can get started with a system as you're creating it and it develops and grows as you develop the system more. So that's a really simple example of how I'm doing quarantine with Craig. A more advanced system that I've got set up in Notion is my writing system, which looks like this 
which is more like a Trello kind of layout, although I do, in the top corner here, have, have quite a few different views in here now. So I've got my list view too, which lists out everything that I'm writing or I've written. As you can see, I, I've only recently got round of the idea of using Notion for all my writing because I was using Rome Research for a lot of my writing. So this kind of sits here often. Most of my ideas stay in the idea stage and never get published. And you can only see there's there's a few of them that's been published. So when I'm record when I'm writing stuff, I put them in here and these are all the ones I'm writing at the minute. And you can see in there I've got all the writing that I've done for this particular article that's not been published yet. This article, by the way, I've been writing for such a long time. I really should publish it because it's nearly there. It's based on a talk that I did two years ago. <laughs> so I do need to publish it. So that's how I've got a writing board set up. And by the way, I could probably set these up as templates. You could try to, if if anybody watches this and they, they want to try them out, I can probably set them up as templates for you to try with, to play with. But in Notion, under templates, they already have a ton of templates already set up for all kinds of stuff in here. As you can see, education, design, roadmaps, user research, databases, personal stuff, you've got notes and drafts, reading lists, all kinds of stuff already set up inside Notion. It is fantastic. It, for, for my productivity, Notion is my thing. It's the place where I dump everything that I'm thinking of and it's super powerful for that. Just one more example I kind of want to show you before I finish this video is how I do my podcast on here too. So I've got my uh, where is it gone? My podcast. There we go. My podcast looks very similar again to how I do my blogging. So I've got idea, next episode, and published. So when it gets to the next episode, I know what it is. But you'll see on here, I'm tracking my episode numbers as well. Because in my podcast, I often say, this is episode 143. Hello. So I track that in here too for my podcast. The other thing is my reading list. So whenever I find anything on the internet, I, and I jot it down in Notion, I write it in here, um, I use the Chrome bookmark to be able to just drop it straight into Notion, it works really well. So I've got all this stuff in here that I'm ready to ready to read, and I've got this book one, which is read all of these books, which is a massive list of books for me to get through. So I've got tons of stuff to read in here too. The other one, just a final one, and I'm as you can tell, I'm probably getting pretty excited about showing you all this Notion stuff now. The final one I want to show you is my Insta posts. So I've just recently started doing Instagram more visually because I'm a designer and heavily in inspired by what Jack's doing at Visualize Value. I decided to try and make my Instagram more valuable by uh, visualizing stuff that I'm thinking of or quotes and things like that. So now whenever I find a quote, I've got a thing in Notion for my Insta posts. I find a quote, I dump it in here in quite a visual way so I can just see it, and then I can just make a, an Instagram post straight from it. So as you can see, just from this, and my setup in Notion isn't amazing. I, I've seen some crazy Notion setups that look beautiful, and mine is kind of put to shame by those kind of things, but it's workable and it works for me, and I find it enhances my product productivity massively because I have a system around collecting any kind of thought that I really want to collect. And when I don't have a system for it, I can easily make a new system inside Notion and save it there and just not lose it. It's, yeah, it's just fantastic. I love it. So please go check out Notion. Give it a try and let me know what you think. I'd love to know if you actually start using it. Final thing to say before I go... I'm Craig Burgess, if you didn't hear me say it at the beginning, this is Quarantine with Craig and I'm doing one of these videos every day around productivity or things that interest me or design or marketing or digital, all that kind of stuff. I'm on Twitter most of the time and that's just at Craig Burgess and if you want to see my website which is packed full of all kinds of crazy stuff too, go over to getdoingthings.com. Until then, I will see you tomorrow for another one. Thank you so much and I'll see you then.